Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve trigonometric equations when you have more than one trigonometric function. So you can see in this example, I have cosine and tangent. Here I have cotangent and tangent, cosine and sine, and then cotangent and sine. Um, so what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to solve them. But how do we do it when we have two different trigonometric functions? Because basically, so far from now, or up to this point, we've just felt focused on solving using one trigonometric function and either using inverse operations or by using factoring. Now, what was important about factoring was when you have something, when you have more than of the same, when you have more than the same, we factored it so we could use the zero product property. What's nice about three of these examples, you can see that they have already actually been factored. They're rewritten as a product of two expressions. This one isn't right now, but we're going to do that so it will be the same. But you can see all three of these are already factored. So therefore, when solving this, now we do have to solve our solutions between 0 and 2 pi. But as far as the solving part, we can quickly, we don't have to factor, we don't need to multiply that through. That's just going to expand it. We already have them as a product of two expressions equal to 0. So I'm just going to apply the zero product property. By applying the zero product property, I can say that the tangent of x minus 1 is equal to 0, or the cosine of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Then I go ahead and solve for my function here on both 1, minus 1, minus 1. And I obtain with negative x or tangent of x equals 1, and cosine of x is equal to negative 1. So basically, remember, we're trying to solve for x. So we're basically saying the tangent of what angle x is equal to 1. The cosine of what angle x is equal to negative 1. Um, and so basically, to isolate that variable x, what we're going to do is take the inverse function on both sides. Just another way of writing what exactly I was saying out loud. So the inverse tangent of tangent is just going to leave, or tangent of x is going to leave us with x equals tangent inverse of 1. Here, that's going to leave us with x equals cosine inverse of negative 1. And again, basically what we're asking ourselves is x represents the angle. So the tangent of what angle is going to equal 1? That's basically what inverse tangent is asking you. Tangent of what angle is going to equal 1, or is going to be 1, what angle is that going to be? So to do that, we've got to go to our unit circle. So I'm going to create a unit circle over here. And remember, tangent, is equal, tangent, um, tangent of an angle represents the y over the x. So if you look at your coordinate points of angles that we know of on our unit circle, we see that our first angle, pi over 4, gives us the point square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. So if I was going to take the tangent of pi over 4, that would be um, my y over my x, which would equal 1. So I can say one solution of this is going to be pi over 4. However, tangent is, an equal, it, tangent is, positive, is equal to positive 1, not only in the first quadrant, but also in the fourth quadrant. Because this angle right here produces the point negative square root of 2 over 2 comma negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, a negative divided by negative is, again, a positive. Um, a positive. And therefore, those are the same, so they're also going to equal 1. Got to take a drink of water. OK, so if we know the 1 solution is pi over 4, what's this next solution? Well, that'd be 4 pi over 4. That'd be 5 pi over 4. OK, then those are going to be the only two solutions because our constraint is our solutions have to be between 0 and 2 pi. So that's it. Um, now we've got to go and figure out, well, when is cosine equal? What angle is when cosine is equal to negative 1? Well, there's only one angle here, um, 0 comma, oops, negative 1 is right here, where the x value is equal to negative 1. So that means cosine of this angle is going to be uh, negative 1. So that angle there is pi. So we can say x is equal to pi over 4, comma 5 pi over 4, and pi. OK? And that's it. Um, now we have another example here. And here, we just have a little bit extra um, inverse operations. However, we have a product of an expression times a product of an expression is equal 0. So therefore, I'm going to, again, use the 0 product property. So I'll say 2 cosine of x plus the square root of 3 equals 0 or 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0. And remember, the or is a conjunction. It could be one or the other or both. And we just use it as the conjunction of both of them um, to set as your solutions. So now, if I solve both of these for my trig function, I have 2 cosine of x equals negative square root of 3 divided by 2, divided by 2, 
cosine of x equals negative square root of 3 divided by 2. Over here, I'll subtract 1 on both sides. 2 sine of x equals negative 1 divided by 2 on both sides. Sine of x equals negative 1 half. Now, rather than showing you taking the tangent or, or the inverse tangent of both sides or the inverse cosine of both sides, I would take the inverse cosine of both sides or the inverse sine of both sides. But again, you're asking yourself you know, really the same thing. And I'm just going to kind of go through what those solutions would be. Cosine of what angle equals negative square root of 3 over 2? Basically, we know that the, this represents the x-coordinate of our angle. So what angle produces an x-coordinate of negative square root of 3 over 2? In the same sign of what angle produces a y-coordinate of negative 1 half. So when looking at this, we know that, we know that cosine represents um, the x-coordinate. And we know that it's negative. So therefore, our two angles are going to have to be in the second quadrant. You know what? I'm kind of running out of. Um, OK, so it has to be in the second quadrant. Now, we know that in the first quadrant, actually, you know what? I'll do a little unit circle here. We know that in the first quadrant here that the angle pi over 6 produces positive square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. But we need negative. So we need to look at that angle in the second quadrant and in the third quadrant, because that's when cosine is negative. And these have the exact same, their exact same points, except here, cosine is negative, or the x coordinate is negative. And here, the x and the y are going to be negative. So what are these angles? Well, this angle is 5 pi over 6. And this angle is 7 pi over 6. So I have solutions here. For here, my solutions are x equals 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Now, I'm going to write in this point here, square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half, or negative. The reason why I'm writing that down is because now I need to figure out the angles where sine of x is equal to negative 1 half. Well, you can see at 7 pi over 6, my sine, my y coordinate is negative 1 half. So this is a, this is a duplicate um, solution. So I'm not going to include it twice. I just need to include it once. But now I need to know, well, when is sine, when is sine always negative? It's a negative in the third and the fourth quadrant. So I need to figure out, well, what angle then is going to be over here? Because here, it's going to be square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. So what is that angle? Well, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6. That angle is going to be 11 pi over 6. So therefore, my last answer for this one is 11 pi over 6. Okay. Um, now in this one, we don't have uh, two, express, two like kind of binomial expressions. We just have cotangent of x equals 0 and tangent of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Again, just apply, the, um, just apply your 0 product property. So therefore, I could write this as cotangent of x equals 0 and tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. Then this is the only one I need to solve. So I have neg tangent of x equals negative 1. Then, well, how do you go ahead and solve for the reciprocal function, right? And we've covered this. When, we, when you're dealing, we, you can go ahead and look for the reciprocal function up in there. That's going to be x over y. But I think it's much easier just to always rewrite your reciprocal functions um, as their reciprocal. So the reciprocal of cotangent is tangent. So if this is over 1, then tangent of x equals 1 over 0, which is undefined. So I need to look for the solutions when tangent is going to be undefined. So again, we go back to our unit circle. Okay. When looking at our unit circle here, um, we look at coordinate points where our y over our x is going to have um, our x, y over x. That means our x is going to be 0. So we have two points here. We actually have 0, comma 1 and 0, comma, negative 1. Both of the tangent of both of these angles is undefined for tangent. So what are those two angles? Well, the first angle is pi halves. And the next last angle, second angle, is 3 pi over 2. So tangent of what angle is undefined? Well, the tangent, the angle, is going to be pi halves and 3 pi halves. Then we're looking for what is the tangent of angle when it's equal to negative 1. Well, we know that positive 1 is pi over 4 and um, did I not write that down? 
5 pi over 4. I wrote that as my answer, right? OK. 5 pi over 4. So tangent is negative in the second and the fourth quadrant. So we know it's going to be in, the, in those regards. So we look at this, we need to find this angle and this angle. So this angle is going to be pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. And then this angle is going to be um, 7 pi over 8. So therefore, our other two solutions are 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 8. OK, now in the last example, you notice that whenever we um, applied our zero product property, the only reason we could apply zero product property is because we had a product set equal to 0. Here we have an example of an expression that's not set equal to 0. So the first thing I need to do is set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract a cotangent squared of x on both sides. By doing that, I now obtain cotangent squared of x times sine of x minus cotangent squared of x equals 0. Okay. Now we got to go back to my video where I talked about factoring. I don't have this written as a product. Okay, I can't isolate the sine and the cotangent separately. So the only way to solve this is by factoring and to set it up as a zero product property so I can solve. So you notice that both of these share a cotangent squared. So I factor out a cotangent squared of x. And by doing that, I'm left with a sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Now I can solve them 0 and sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Then, now, I can solve both of them. So to undo squaring, I'll take the square root of both sides. That's going to leave me with cotangent of x equals 0. And over here, I'm going to add 1, add 1. I have sine of x is equal to a positive 1. OK, so I'm actually going to continue using this union circle. I already talked about cotangent of x equals 0. So I already know those two solutions are pi, pi halves and 3 pi halves. So I'll have x equals pi halves and 3 pi halves. Then sine, what, sine of what angle equals 1? You could take the inverse sine of both sides and say x equals the sine inverse of 1. But basically what we're asking is what angle, when you take the sine of it, is equal to 1? Well, remember the sine represents the y coordinate. So you look at this point, you see, oh, here my y is equal to 1. So the sine of this angle produces 1. And that angle is pi halves, which we already have in our solution. So therefore, it's going to be a duplicate. So we'll just leave our solution as x equals pi halves and 3 pi over 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve trigonometric, trigonometric equations when you have more than one trig function. Thanks.